that spiritual man, okay? There was one time that I asked Daryl, I said, Daryl, let's go visit Mr. War. This is during Mr. War's latter years. I said, let's go and visit Mr. War. And I got my Bluetooth box, and we got over to Mr. War's house, uh, to Tracy's, Mr. War's daughter. Uh, went over to her house, and Mr. War was there. And I got my music and turned that music on. And we listened to the music that he loved, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, the Kenton Spiritual, the Lee Williams and the QCs, uh, uh, Rance Allen. Um, we, he had such a wonderful time praising the Lord at that given time. And I had a really good time praising the Lord with Mr. War. Mr. War told me right before I left him on that day, you say you love the gospel music, where well, you also have to live the gospel. And I kept them words with me for a long time, and I'm still going to keep those with me. Family man. Mr. War was one heck of a family man. He loved his family. He showed in his actions every day how much he loved his family. The teaching. You could tell in the, ch uh, the children's behavior that he was teaching. Mr. War also taught to love your family. Not just your family, but love everyone. There was a time that I know that Mr. War had to teach that you don't mess with the War family. Right. <laughs> you don't mess with the War family. Well, me and my best friend, Daryl, I think we was about 12 years old, and we got into a little fight out there in front of the house. And we, and we going at it. We just tussling away. Out of nowhere, here comes Tracy War. And she gave me a good clock and pow! I'm still today explaining the lump on my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So, um, there's so many different ways you can explain, you can talk about Mr. War, you know, and the different type of man that he was, you know what I mean, the coaching and the, uh, and the sports fanatic and um, just so many things, you know, you just can't say it all right now. Okay, but last but not least, I know one thing about Mr. Warren, and he was that peaceful man. He taught peace. Okay, when he talked to you, if anybody ever had a conversation on the porch with Mr. Warren, you know what I mean? He always talked, uh, you know, he don't like the finger pointing, he don't like the name calling and the pushing and the shoving and the, the, the greediness, and the, he didn't like none of that. He was a peaceful man. And when he left here, he went in peace. Did not suffer. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Just let me up here, huh, Stacey? Okay. I'm not going to sing. Before I, I wrote a poem, before I say my poem, I just need to let the family know. Welcome to the club. I know what road you're on right now. Because you all had a father who was a father, a daddy, a man, who, <laughs> it's a difference from just somebody helping your mother give birth and all of that, but when your father plays a positive spiritual role in your life and have some, some substance and upbringing and that you can be proud of. Drag our ass. It's only one other man on this earth that I considered my other father, and that was Mr. Sylvester War. So he lived a good life, a, a God-fearing life. Okay, that's that's what I'm gonna say that. I mean, I'm gonna read my poem. <clears throat> my other father. 
Writing this poem was extremely hard for I didn't know how or where to start. You see, Mr. War was a man whom I've always given the utmost respect. And from the first time we met, we had a father-daughter connect. I was just a teenage kid when I learned of some of the great things he did. For, he, for a while, he raised his kids on his own. And I'm sure this makes it harder for them now that he's gone. A man raising a little girl is an awkward and challenging task. But he did a good job. Look at his daughter, do you need to ask? A God-fearing man that stood his ground and know that whenever you was, <clears throat> whenever you was going, whenever he was around, you was going to get a little gospel. Um, let, me, let me go back. I'm nervous. A God-fearing man that stood his ground and know that you was going to get a little gospel whenever he was around. Because he possessed a presence of poise and respect, you didn't even feel bad when you got checked. Not a man who would put up a lot of fuss. I can't remember a time that I've ever heard him cuss. He loved his kids each in a special but different way and seeing their dad often made their day. Growing up to the bowling lanes they went for this was how a lot of their family time was spent. And did y'all know Mr. War was cool? And did y'all also know he was from the old school? He laid down his law and made it perfectly clear and trust, you paid attention whether you wanted to hear. You, he placed moral standards in all his kids. Heck, we need to give him a round of applause for how well he did. Corinthians 16, 13 and 14 says, be watchful, stand firm in faith, act like men, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. That alone lets me know Mr. War is resting in heaven above. One of his sons said to me, if I could just be half as good as my daddy, I'd be glad. So to that son, my girl, to that son, please don't be sad. Remember all the good, good times you had. To the other kids, life for you will never be the same. Find peace in knowing your father's in no more pain. Occasionally as he crosses your mind, look up to heaven for there you will find. The good memories will begin to overflow, overflow especially the ones you like. And you'll also get a vision of him up in heaven, bowling a strike. <laughs> Love, Tracy. God bless. At this time, we'll have um, family re representations. Brother Daryl War, son, Brother Brian War, son, and following that will be a family representation by Aaron. to God and everyone that came out tonight, people in the pulpit. I didn't write no speech on my father, because I ain't had to. I can tell you everything about him, the good, the bad. Man, I had the best, the best, the best father in the world, man. And I know there's somebody out here that want to say they got a better father, man, I'll give you a run for your money right there. <laughs> I'll give you a run for your money right there, man. I have the best father, a brother, a son, a uncle. Anybody can ask, though, man. Mr. War was good, man. Good, man. Though know, I got myself in trouble, my father was still there for me. When I got out of trouble, father was still there for me. When I was growing up, delivering the newspapers, probably everybody in here that know me know, but I used to be the paper boy. Man, he come home from work. I might be in there sleep. My father got the papers rolled for me already, ready to help me go deliver my papers, take me to school, give us lunch money. When other kids weren't even getting lunch money, we still got lunch money. Man, then my father was my coach. Showed me how to play baseball. I ain't want to do that. Then my father showed me how to bowl. Uh-oh, what'd he do that for? <laughs> Turned me into a monster when he showed me how to bowl. And to this day, man, I give everything and everything to him, man. 
If I can wake him up and say, let's go home, man, I would, man, but he in a better place now, man. And one more thing, you know, everybody in here, nobody want to die, but everybody want to go to heaven. Everybody want to go to heaven, so Pops, man, I love you to the end, man. You my best friend, man. I just can't explain to y'all how good my dad was to me, man. Not only me, my sister, I only got one sister. She run the show. <laughs> I'm the oldest, but she run the show. Man, man, I can't. That's Tracy. Can I, that's to my sister, Tracy. With an eye. Man, with an eye. <laughs> man, all I can say, man, we gonna miss you, dad, man. You can come back, man. Just hit me, man. I'm going to do what you asked me to. I hear you now saying, son, you better get it together. I ain't here no more. I got to get it together for my dad. And I just want to thank all y'all for coming out, paying respect to my dad, man. And I love all y'all, man. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Good job. First, giving honor to God, ministers, family, and friends. I want to thank everybody for coming out, showing respect to Mr. Sylvester War. Um, it's very hard to be up here. When he passed away, I, uh, I went on the internet and I found a poem that fit him just perfect. And it's on the obituary. It's called The Greatest Hero. And it goes, the world has many heroes, some of you know by name. They give their best at what they do, so they deserve their fame. But among all of the heroes the world has ever had, there was no one admired more than the guy that I call dad. Perhaps not like the others, he doesn't look for praise. He's heroic in his special way, in his thoughtful, caring ways. Perhaps he's not as famous as the others that you see, but he's everything and so much more that heroes ought to be. He keeps his word, it's good as gold. On this you can depend. He's honest and he's loyal too. He's also a true friend. When I hear about a hero and the great things they have done, it reminds me of my father. He is the greatest one. I love you, Dad. And it says E to the J on here, but I'm, I gotta take my credit because I found this from my father, and it fits all of us. So this is from us to him, not EJ. No, no offense, E, you still my brother, I love you, but this is from <laughs> all of us to him. Now I want to talk about my dad for a minute. I was born March 5th, 1970. I was his two-week late birthday present, and uh, I just didn't share, I just didn't have, I only have five siblings left for Four siblings left, excuse me. And, is it four or five? Five, okay. A little confused, Marshall's not here anymore, but he's, he's with Marshall now. But anyway, he wasn't just our father. I'm starting off with Fernwood. He was the greatest father to Fernwood kids. 103rd Street, like they say on here, the 10 tray. He was the father to all the kids around them. Then we go on, we transferred to Mega Evers. He was the father to the people at Mega Evers. Then I made it to CVS. And Tracy was already there. She said, you ain't gonna follow me. I said, I'm going, I'm following you to CVS. And you ain't got nothing to say about it. I didn't want to go to Julian with Daryl and the knuckleheads from the hood. I wanted to go to CVS. I wanted to follow my sister. So that's what I did. And then he already knew half the people there from Tracy. And comes my friends. Then I just didn't share them with those people also. I shared them with the people of Palisade Bowling Alley. You know, great times, getting us up Saturday morning. Sometimes we had to catch the bus. If we didn't want to catch the bus, we complained enough, he'd come and get us, you know. We only had one straight shot down Halston, but we still was just too lazy to catch the bus, you know. And later on in life, you know, when Tracy would throw her parties, he would just sit on the patio and just look at all his flock. All the neighborhood children were his flock. He was like a shepherd over all his sheep. You know, he was so happy to see anybody from the neighborhood that wanted to come and kick it with Tracy in this big, beautiful backyard that her and Rod have. 
and I extend my heartfelt thank yous to Tracy and Rob for doing what they do. You know, I know it's not easy because I was out there helping them and he was heavy, you know. I had to get him up, but I just take pleasure in serving, doing little things for him. I took real good pleasure in it. And I want to tell y'all, if y'all up here beefing with your dad or your parents, y'all better get that stuff together real fast, real fast, real fast. And time is running out of each and every one of us in here. Sandglass is getting lower and lower. And you're sitting up here, you're beefing about little things with your parents. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. You're beefing with your kids. You're beefing with your parents. I am the father that I am today because of this man right here. I will never forsake my kids for the simple fact that he never forsake us. I'm going to give my kids my best every day of my life because he did it for me. And my kids know I got their back. They know it. They tell me. And I just said, everything that I'm telling you, it came from him. I'm just repeating it. I'm just repeating it. I'm looking like him. I act like him. <laughs> and his lessons gonna go on. I hope my kids take it to their kids, you know? I'm not gonna ever forsake my kids because he didn't ever forsake us. Man. Never. Don't forsake your kids. Y'all people out here bickering with y'all parents, go see y'all parents. Cause y'all right. gonna be up here one day, right. like me. Go see y'all parents, spend some quality time with them. Don't just go in there and say hi. You know, Tracy always say, you always on your phone, you always on your phone. And he'll get on me about it. But I went out there with sincere love and gratefulness and appreciation to be with him, to be out there, to just sit down and watch football games and basketball games and talk silly. You know, as I got older, he loosened up the strings a little bit, but he still had a look that I knew he wasn't playing <laughs> if he looked at me in a certain way, you know. I knew to stay in my place, and I still know to stay in my place because of him. Respect my elders and everything that, you know, I just learned good lessons. 45 years, how can you be sad? You know, I'm sad, but I'm also glad. I got 45 years of good instruction and direction every single day of my life. Every single day of my life. So I just want to tell you that your memory is not going to go anywhere. I love you forever. Your grandchildren will love you. Your nieces and nephews will love you. And I also shared him with my cousins. So he was Uncle Daddy also. And uh, y'all just remember the family. Stay tight with the family. Keep in touch, you know, check and see how we're doing. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gave me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Put your hands together. Real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gave me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. That was one of my father's favorite songs, and I just had to sing it in, in his memory. Um, man, um, first giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, and um, thank you all for, for being here um, for my father's uh, celebration. Excuse me, I'm kind of nervous. I ain't never been in this pool pit before. Um, I know my pastor graces this uh, <laughs> pulpit every Sunday, and this is just, you know, like, they don't call this the powerhouse for nothing. I can uh, <laughs> feel God's power up here. But um, my father, you know, I know everybody, well, mostly everybody, says that their father was a great dad. And like my brother Daryl said earlier, you know, I, I will debate you on that one about, you know, how, how great my father was, you know, if you try to debate me that you had a great dad, I had a greater dad. I ain't saying that in arrogance, but you know, my father was a true great man of God. He lived it, you know, he, uh, his actions showed it, and um, he was just a great man. You know, what, what, what man do you know will, will sacrifice his sleep time to be at one of your band performances that starts at seven o'clock and he got to turn around and be up 
at like one, two o'clock in the morning. So he literally getting 30 minutes to an hour of sleep, if that, just to support you and be in your band performances. And he got to turn around and go to work at one or two o'clock in the morning. That's, 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 that's a characteristic of a great man. That's a characteristic of a, of a family man. You know, sacrificing and giving up his time to, um, to uh, instill in you, you know, greatness and, and support you in your dreams and your visions and your aspirations. My father was a great man and um, my father also didn't take no mess. <laughs> you know, uh, James Brown made a song called Papa Didn't Take No Mess and it's a particular, um, it's a particular, some, some particular lyrics in his uh, songs said, uh, Papa didn't cuss, he didn't raise a whole lot of fuss. But when we did wrong, Papa, well, y'all know the rest of the song, but, <laughs> but you know what? You can't have hell in you, and it needs to be beaten out of you, and he, that's what he did to me. You know, I know I didn't get it as, the, you know, as, as bad as the rest of y'all, but you know, I still got it, though. I can still feel those beatings today. And um, you know, my father, he was a great man, and um, I remember this one particular time, he uh, said to me, um, he, he talked about you know how he got saved, and um, my my oldest brother, <laughs> the troublemaker, <laughs> stayed in the trouble, and um, he had gotten his, he had gotten himself into some serious trouble, and um, I ain't gonna say what it was, but um, my father he told me that I prayed to God one day, son, and I told him. God, if you deliver my son from this situation, I will give my life to you and I will live for you from this day forth and I will never turn back. And obviously, he remained true to his word and he gave his life to God. He became saved, became an ordained minister, later on an ordained elder, and he just lived a godly life before us and before my, uh, my friends and my uh, close ones, you know, and my, just everybody, you know, my, my, my father was a great man. And um, he taught me how to dress, you know. Uh, well, in my younger days, I was kind of rebellious, didn't want to dress up for church, you know. Um, I would uh, try to, I would try to dress down, but you know, my father wasn't going for that. So I would uh, wear some, some black slacks and a, uh, or, uh, you know, all white shirt or whatever, something like that to that relevance. But he eventually taught me to, taught me how to dress, taught me how to tie my first tie, you know? Um, well, he didn't teach me how to tie wins now, like, you know, kind of, you know, good at tying ties now. But he, he taught me the basic steps of how to tie a tie. You know, most, most people, well, I ain't gonna say most, but it's a good majority of people who don't have their father around to teach them simple things like that. And I'm so grateful that, you know, he did little things like that, you know, just taught me how to tie a tie and stuff to that relevance. And, um, he also had his own uh, little uh, sense of style that um, he, well, y'all know y'all, um, y'all see people dressed in a color suit, you know, with a different color shoes or whatever. You know, my father actually uh, did that before everybody else started it today. Because um, I remember one Sunday, this is, you know, when I knew how to dress myself. My father came in the front room wearing a green, cert, green, uh, green suit, excuse me and some uh, brown shoes. I'm like, Daddy, what are you doing? You look like grass and mud. What? <laughs> so uh, I had this pair of uh, green shoes. My brother Brian was there. I had this pair of green shoes and went downstairs. I, I, I brought them upstairs and I'm like, here, Daddy, put those on. You ain't finna go out there looking like that. So, um, you know, he, after he uh, put the shoes on, you know, it, it blended together real well and then uh, my brother Brian was like, yeah, you saved daddy because you showed him like that. <laughs> but um, when I was in fifth grade, uh, my father, well, God delivered, you know, my father from a head-on collision. So I could have lost my father at a very young age, was nine years old, you know. And um, my father, he just was a real strong man. And I don't know how I would have. I don't know how I would have lived my life if he would have been taken away from me at that point in my life because I am the man I am today because of my father. You know, my father showed me how to walk, talk, and act right 
and to live a godly life. You know, I know I know I ain't did everything right. I ain't talking like I'm perfect. You know, but my father, he was there to correct me and to chastise me, and I'm also grateful for that. And I'm also grateful that God gave me this man to be my father. And um, he never let us part ways without praying. Never ever let us part ways without praying. You know, um, when he was living with my sister, I would always go over there on Sunday and Monday, because I'm always off those two days. You know, go over there, watch the football game with him, go over there and watch wrestling. Yes, my father was a big wrestling fan. <laughs> and, um, you know, he never let us part ways without praying, because he said, you always say, son, you just never know when your, when your last moment on this earth is going to be, so we're going to pray. We're going to pray before you leave. And I'm also grateful for that. And uh, another song that my father used to sing, Don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Don't stop praying, he'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Don't stop praying, he'll answer you. Don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Don't stop praying, he'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Don't stop praying, he'll answer you. My father, my father was a very honorable, he was a very honorable man, and he loved everyone. He had absolutely no hatred in his heart for no one, and I know that, I know that it made his heart glad the day that my brother Marshall made peace with the rest of my family. I'm not gonna go into the situation, but I know that there's a big, there was a big family feud, and it took my father to come close to being on his deathbed on this month two years ago for him to realize for my brother Marshall to realize, you know, what was really at stake. And um, sometimes it takes an unfortunate situation for us to really realize the situation at hand and to really realize how dumb and immature we can act sometimes. So I'm glad that my brother put his pride to the side and asked for forgiveness because if he didn't, then he surely would have been burning in hell. You know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it um, because in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 25, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and rememberest that thy brother hath an alt against thee, leave thy, gift at the, leave thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First reconcile to thy brother and then offer thy gift. Agree to thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him at least at any time advisory delivery, deliver, excuse me, be to the judge, be to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. So in other words, if you have beef with not literally your brother, but with anyone, if you have hatred in your heart, and if you don't go ask for forgiveness, then you're going you're gonna to be cast down to hell. You're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever. And there ain't going to be no end to it. So I'm saying this to say that, like my brother Brian said earlier, if you got problems with your parents, go fix it. If you got problems with your brother, go fix it. If you got problems with your sisters, your friends, whoever it may be. I don't want to see none of y'all or worry about none of y'all being cast down to hell because... I know that I'm going to live right, and I know that I'm going to go to heaven. So I want to see y'all there. This is basically what I'm saying. So how can we love God when we've never seen a day in our life and hate our brother whom we see daily? Love is an action word. And if we truly love my father, like we say we do, I'm talking to my immediate family or for anyone that felt that my father was a, figure, was a, was a father figure to you, if we truly love my father, and if we say that um, we love my father, 
then let's, let's honor my father yeah. and live a godly life right. before God. Let's, 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 let's give our lives over to God and live a godly life and so, that, so that we can all see each other in heaven. Because like my brother Daryl said earlier, everybody want to get to heaven. But if